Sports. Yeah, so my name is Cameron Florchuk. Uh, I'm a black belt under Team Henzo Gracie. Uh, I recently moved to uh, Austin, Texas. Um, for the longest time, though, I was up in Canada. Most of my jiu-jitsu career has been up in Canada. And then just recently, I moved to the U.S. with my wife. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just to keep pursuing jiu-jitsu goals, go down there with Team New Wave and, um, you know, keep progressing my, my skill set and uh, keep being able to, you know, e even come back home and, and bring more jiu-jitsu back to the people here as well. Um, so it's been good, man. Yeah, like uh, I've been having a little bit of issues with the visa situation, try okay. to get back down there. So um, right now I'm here in Canada, do the competition, and then I'll be uh, doing some teaching, some training, and then heading back down there in May uh, just to keep getting getting after it, you know? Yeah. You're heading back down south. That's right, yeah. Right, because you just said you, you moved. The, you've yeah. Been, you've been living there. So I'm, waiting my, I'm actually waiting on my green card, so I'm going to okay. go do an interview. Uh, I got to go through an interview process. I got to go do, like, blood work, stuff like that, and then, uh, and then basically... If I pass all that, then I can enter the U.S. as a, as a resident. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, put that in context because it sounds like that's a big move for, for, for someone. You know what I mean? Like you're relocating to, to a new country. I know for it's sure. just down south, but, but put it in context for us because you're, you're doing this all in the pursuit of jiu-jitsu, correct? Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's uh, been a tall order to say the least. Like uh, just even between move, like financially, obviously – um, you know, is, is a major role being able to move down there. <clears throat> uh, you know, I sold, I sold a gym here. I was heavily involved in the Ottawa BJ scene for pretty much the past decade. Um, had so many great relationships, so many, you know, wonderful experiences doing that. And then, um, you know, but it's been a little, you know, luckily I have a solid wife. She, she, you know, she, she has a job. She's an American citizen. Okay. Um, so she's a dual citizen, I should say. Nice. Um, so she's really been holding it down for, for, for me and for us. And, uh, you know, that's definitely having a partner to kind of help and, and make that transition smoother has been really helpful. So, um, yeah, between that and just like, you know, even the, the personal side of things like family, like, you know, they're kind of worried, oh man, moving down to the U S it's, it's kind of like, you, you know, they see the news uh, of course. And there's, there's always concerns of, sure. of, of moving countries, but it's actually, you know, I've been pretty fortunate and pretty lucky. It hasn't been too uh, rough. I would okay. just say it's mostly just a waiting game. Mm. Uh, waiting game, waiting for the paperwork to get cleared, you know, waiting for the interview dates, waiting for things like that. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's it's been a blessing, actually, to be honest. So what's that like in terms of the jujitsu ecosystem in the u.s versus that of uh the canadian one when you compare uh you know the community in the scene which one's more developed which what, what how would you differentiate i guess what i'm asking between the jujitsu community in the u.s which i'm going to assume is much bigger Right. In numbers. And, and yeah. yeah, it's, um, you know, the U.S. obviously has what, 10 times the population as, as we right. do. So the width and the, the depth of guys down there, the pools are just, you know, of, of training partners are just so much bigger. Um, and I would say the nature of the people, they're just more competitive. They're just more competitive. Okay. You know what I mean? Like Americans have always been known to be hyper competitive, always being on the sta the you know the world stages and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that being said, though, we do have there are some like really good Canadians here in Canada. They're just far and few in between, and you're not getting more than a handful of guys in any given room in Canada that are. Whereas in the U.S., for example, it's you know you're dozen two dozen three dozen guys that are all hyper competitive that are on the scene very active you know pushing the envelope so um that's you know it, that's i would say the biggest difference people have a you know to a lot of them are more entrepreneurial mindset have an entrepreneurial mindset so you see a lot more guys building lifestyles around making money from jiu-jitsu right as well as training you know three to five hours a day whereas wow. in canada even just having a, a base of students to support a gym, uh, to have the competitors have those opportunities to make money. And to, it's a little bit, you know, not as much here in Canada. It's right. still there, but, 
you know, moving Austin is turning into the new Mecca for sure. Like it's becoming a, a new hub, you know, right. flow grappling's there, all the major teams there. Of course, John Danahar, right. um, where, where I'm at. So, um, yeah, it's, I would say that's, you know, there's definitely a very big difference for sure. Speak to us on your evolution as as a jiu and as a grappler overall from the first time you stepped on the mat to where you are today. How would you say your jiu-jitsu has evolved? What has been the catalyst to that development? And I believe it's continuous, right? So, Definitely. So if, if you were to give someone, I guess what I'm asking is the Coles notes to how you became you in like, you know, in a tweet, what would it be? And and bring the mic closer, sorry. Yeah, so I think um, as a as a child or as a youth and yeah. the youth programs when I first started uh, back in like 2009, 10, around the, you know, back like pre-high school basically. Um, you're a young dude. How old are you? Uh, I turned 30 in a couple months. So. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. You're, you're so, still young. <laughs> still got some years. <laughs> For sure. Um, so it's, you know, starting like... 14 years ago now, you know, the youth programs were significantly smaller than they are now. Mm. The progression really is, for my personal progression, a lot of it had to do with just good mentors, you know, people that as you naturally evolve through adolescence and then into young adulthood, like early 20s, things like that, there's just been like, I've always sought after, I always had good mentors when I was a kid. Okay. And then as a youth and a teenager, I had good mentors. Um, that were always just kind of like encouraging, you know, I had good parents. I had people that were always like, keep going, keep going, you know, along with my own internal drive to want to do well and seek that, you know, in myself. And, uh, I would say too, you know, being able to not just think only about the athletics side of things, but also for me, as I progressed out of college, I was taught a lot to focus on helping others as well, you know, being able to give back to the jiu-jitsu community. How are right. you going to teach? How, how can you scale classes? How can you, you know, even kids programs, kids camps, things like that. Interesting. And that kind of helped me uh, make a living at jiu-jitsu too as well. So that it kind of keeps you in it. Whereas I think a lot of guys fall off because they, you know, they get reg AK, quote unquote regular jobs or right. they get like, so being able to, for me, my progression has just come down to a lot of like really good support systems and you know always trying to find answers always trying to find that, that new level that i can break through you know whether it's traveling or investing more myself to with my teammates to be able to go to the, the bigger tournaments to be able to go to the the other con not just you know in north america but to other continents and, wow. and compete and just get your name out there and uh you know the european scene's big abu dhabi things like that so um, that's been a little bit of my progression is, is, you know, just kind of going through different hurdles and, um, always, I think just having goals, you know, the cliche is like, you got to set goals for yourself. Right. And that's for me, that's always like every year I try to set certain goals and every year I try I make them bigger. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how I've been doing it. So for someone who's never seen you compete, uh, how would you describe yourself as a competitor there on that time? So I would say my style is, I would say it's pretty traditional. Like it's, it's very like, uh, mono directional game, like take down, pass the guard, get chest to chest, chest to back, and then work the finishes from the back. So that's kind of been my, you know, especially coming from more of a gi background. I mm. spent most of my career up to this point doing the gi just recently in the past year of really just not put the gi on the jacket and just focus mostly on no gi. Um, and I would say it's like a pressure based style. Uh, and then definitely a third of the time I'm trying to find those moments of opportunity where I can, you know, put the pace on, have a bit more of a dynamic, athletically based technique. So, but as I get a bit older, I'm trying to lean more and more towards just like calculated, controlled uh, style of game. So, um, and then of course, you know, I'm constantly trying to look for the submissions as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a it's been a uh, it's been a progression in that traditional style, and then more recently, I've definitely taken a bigger liking to the leg lock game because I think you know John puts a heavy emphasis on on the leg the leg lock game. So I've been studying a lot more of that and trying to work work that into my game, trying to blend that into my game, so to speak. So um, yeah, 
I was, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you about John, but before we, we, we dive into that, um, curious to know, how's your day gone here today? When, when I came in, in the space here where, where I'm interviewing you, I, I noticed you, you were sitting there to, to my right. You had your headphones on. You seem to be in, in your own zone. Yeah, doing a bit of a 20 minute meditation. Yeah, right? yeah, totally. You were, you know, Just trying to was, clear the mind, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, and I saw you and initially I was going to come by, like trying to, you know, say hey what's up but but i i you know i knew you were in your yeah. in your zone um how's your day gone as far as the, the the matches and uh speak to us about meditation and, and calming the mind and 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 why you do that yeah so today has been really good actually uh i had four matches uh two two via wins by via submission and then two on points uh and then now i'm just uh, resetting the mind for the finals. The finals are at 8 p.m. tonight. So, um, you know, I like personally, I like to, if I have time in between matches or prior to the finals, even just day to day, like I throw on the, what's the app called? It's the is Sam it, Sam Harris app. Is it Headspace? It's no. called Waking Up, but oh, it's like a Sam okay. Harris app. I, th he, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, he has yeah. like these like 20 minute daily meditations. So I just try to do them and just kind of settles everything in you know kind of mm -hmm. calms the mind and when you get those racing thoughts or you know people call it anxiety and sure. depression of course it's kind of just like just puts you back to like a, a calm for me it puts puts me back to like a calm baseline so i try to get in at least 20 minutes a day i feel much better after honestly yeah, yeah. you seem very calm and yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm also so. tired and calm you know right. so no, i'm trying I, to regain the energy you know right well listen i i appreciate you know this this yeah, this yeah. interview here um, you know, I, I know, I know that the, the mental game is something people don't, uh, well, I shouldn't say they don't talk about, but, but it seems like that's kind of like the, the X factor, right? Especially at, at your level of, of yeah. competition, people who are competing internationally and going after it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. if we can expand on that, when did you start exploring meditation and, and the mental aspect of, of combat or part or for combat sports like jujitsu and nogi? Yeah, I think for me, the, you know, or in the podcast land and all the famous podcasts that, that are out there, you start, some, whether it's ads or you just hear people like, you know, successful people meditating and things like that. So, you know, I basically got a subscription many years back and just started doing it like, you know, try to get in 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, fit it in fit here and there. And then uh, I noticed just things were a little bit more like I had a little bit less angst mm. but it was just able to go from this kind of always feeling tense to right. just finding ways to relax but still be in like that flow state you is, know? is this do you mean tense before the match during the match even or just regular like, day-to-day oh, like, okay. like working right. you know what I mean right. or, or sure. uh, tr before training but definitely during competition like the night before I'm trying to meditate just like not think about anything just literally just be absolutely present like i'm not thinking about anything i'm not thinking about what i'm doing i'm not thinking right. about planning anything just how hard is that it's di it's literally the hardest thing i think for most humans like it's absolutely challenging yeah. to not think about anything it's right and that's the whole goal is like noticing that you're thinking and then just coming back to a, a baseline of the breath or whatever so right i you know i wouldn't say it's like everybody is gonna find success in it or people that do it are gonna find you know teach their own you know some people go for a jog some people go lift weights like i still do that too but right. the meditation part helps a lot so the guided meditations too you know i think sam like the the the, the operator of the app really just you know breaks it down basically so um yeah if we could go back to to your matches you said you won two by points and two by submission uh can you tell us which submissions you 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 beat uh yeah, so my first one was uh, Kimura, like okay. shoulder lock. And then uh, the second submission was arm lock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, you're training with John Danaher, yeah? Yeah, so I haven't actually been to Austin in like five months. Okay, okay. Uh, but prior to that, basically the last half of last year, I was there. Okay. I had met John many years ago through my other instructor. Right. Um, and we had been going down to New York and stuff like that. Uh, going down training at the Blue Basement. So I've done a couple privates with him, done his classes. And then uh, over the pandemic, I saw that they moved to Austin and luckily... Right. We were, my wife and I were able to set it up, get down there, get some work. 
and then um so yeah uh sorry i forgot your question but it's well, it's 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 about so obviously he's, i'll be heading back there in may though so okay. um, yeah end right. of may yeah just curious to know what is it like uh, what, what was that experience like I, I know you you've you've had you've trained with him before but i i mentioned that because uh obviously he's a big name in in this sport right he's almost like a uh i don't want to say spiritual guru of, of the pretty sport, much though but, yeah, but a lot of the literature a lot you know a lot of these and he's he's got i believe he's, he's at the PhD. forefront right yeah. absolutely you know and and you know it's interesting how much of uh his messaging is integrated in, in a lot of different sort of, uh, you know, if, if you read a lot of articles, people reference him. There's a lot of quotes. He's well respected, Definitely. obviously, yep, absolutely. So th- that's why I'm curious to know what's it like training with him, and what is it about him that, uh, what is it about John, I suppose, that that makes him such a uh, an excellent coach? C- could I call him that? Definitely, yeah. He's he's all of the above. You know, he. I think t- traditionally jiu-jitsu has always been kind of. Um, relayed as like a feeling base like it's you know you know you see the word thrown around systematic like that even me just saying that doesn't do it justice like every scenario whether it's technical or tactical he has multiple layers and sub layers within those that are systematic and he's able to relay that in such a like clear and concise manner to the point where you can basically take that input from a said lesson plan and then run with that idea or the concept or the exact technical scenario and for me i've always had that kind of mind i think like a lot of people that are have been engineers or things like that like um uh like people in stem for example like sure. that that the way it's broken down and how he's able to like just tie things together. You know, you've heard it on probably many podcasts, many, many different articles, things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's how I would best describe it. That's, I learned best that way too. And I enjoy somebody, even if it's brief moments of like good job or, you know, nice setup, uh, being in the room at new wave, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to just get that one or two, moments of feedback and john's really good at that like he, he's always scanning the room he's always noticing he notices things that you don't even notice and mm. he, he picks up on things and he's able to calibrate the training in such a way that he can he gets the feel of the room and i think somebody controlling the room like that for their athletes like i i personally thrive in environments like that so um it's definitely been a pleasure man it's 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 it was eye-opening too like it's one thing to kind of drop in like we, we would drop in for a week or two weeks to to, to new york but right. after like several months being in the room you really start to see why he's you know the bat the best at what he does is because he's just constantly there no one's more dedicated he's just vigorously and attentively there on the mats present and that's like you know couldn't as an athlete and uh, and a competitor you couldn't ask for anything better than that you know so <laughs> sounds like it man. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like an amazing coach and, and a sure. coach that that can really communicate uh, as you're mentioning you know every complex layer to a scenario he can take the complexity and use simple words to kind of and, and that's the exact word is communication he right. is a world-class communicator of jiu-jitsu absolutely i and mean that's it, really what it is you know you know it's funny if you if you use uh you know chat gpt yeah, yeah like yeah, i mean good. like i think a lot of content that's out there for for this sport be gi or no gi a lot of it seems i think to extract from him because a lot of what he puts out others run i'm not saying there aren't others who who do, who uh for the sport of jiu-jitsu who don't communicate but for me w- what i run into is a lot of of his work can i ask a follow-up you know how you're talking about that one example where he'll pinpoint something can you give us uh like in in, in, when he's assessing a scenario that that you're in a a, a predicament let's say can you give a grappling predicament can you give us an an example of how he's refined one portion of your game yeah even if it's off the mat if it's more of a uh you know attitude yeah like sure psychological sure um yeah, there's been definitely many like pivotal moments, just like even just small examples like uh you know, I asked him one time about a back back escapes. Okay. Like general back escape and he basically just broke down three basic ways to get out. 
and the reasons behind why those are the three best ways. And yeah, he's, it's just like, it's like, imagine, imagine a, he has an equation for every scenario. So Jesus. you basically get the equation. The way I see it is like you get the equation and then you can just like go to work with that equation. So I can, you can customize it. I as can, you go along. Yeah. I can kind of say, okay, this is how he is describing it verbally. And then I can, and then tactically he like paints a picture in your mind. Mm. So not only do you have the technical layers, but then he's able to tie it together with like the tactical decision making as well, which is, I think sometimes harder for some people like, like, for example, are we doing uh, like EBI overtime rules and, you know, just simple things that you wouldn't otherwise think of, but are just so like fundamental to him and like what he, how he sees jitsu. It's almost like, why, why didn't I see this before? You know, it's, right. it's a very fundamental thing, but that can like drastically change the trajectory of that scenario all off of like less than 20 second communication with them which is like it's a game changer right? yeah, yeah yeah like i was telling people i learned more in like six months wor working there than i did in the past like three years that's up in insane. canada you know like that is insane and like Gor like when you hear gordon and those guys talk about how quickly the progression is like it's just there's th just imagine somebody who's working on jiu-jitsu thinking about jiu-jitsu like 16 hours a day or, or more wow like you did like that's all he does like there's right. no other it, like nothing else infringes on his day but jujitsu. It's just like from our, like from my understanding, you know, from my from my limited understanding. He's fully committed, yeah. Obviously, like yeah, in yeah. So may, may I ask this question? Because because you're fully committed, in, as far as jujitsu. Obviously, you're you're making it your life, right? You you've relocated down south. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I don't think if anyone hears this, I don't think they they would doubt yeah. that. How? And, and I ask this because in a lot of other fields, whether it's uh, business, whether it's academics, whether it's parenting, whether it's whatever it is, there's something about fully committing yourself to something, you know, yeah. to, to, a, to, to a goal or an activity from there, breaking down a set of, of goals. And how important, and I, I'm sorry if I'm asking all these, all these questions, but you've, you've opened uh, a, a lot of doors here in my mind. And I'm like, how important is it to be fully committed in your training and developing? Whether you're, you know, some of these folks out here who, who might, this might be their first tournament ever. Yep. And, or someone who, like, like yourself, you're, you're, you've been at this for a long time. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, how important is that level of, like, 101% commitment. Yeah, I think it, I think it's imp like the level of importance is subjective like you know it, if in how high your goals are, I think you have to match that level of like what people say they want to get to, like a certain level or tier of athlete, for example. What like you said in business or parenting or you know, life in general. It just in goals, anything, you know, right. it's there's it's something like, about fully committing it's yourself. It's like committing. Right? Right. I think too is committing, but you also hear the word th sacrifice thrown around too. Like right. a lot of people will commit, but sometimes committing isn't necessarily adding more or doing more. Sometimes it's actually taking things away. Mm. You know, things like extracurriculars that are unnecessary, like like other social activities that sure. would be fun and great. Right. You know, but it doesn't contribute to the lofty goals that are athletic. In, in the pursuit of being like you know a higher level athlete so um you know for those kids out there yes 100 percent. you know you got to go full out there's other people out there hungrier and more driven and more like that want it more than you and have and come from a lesser place than you mm. you know and like you have to get to that place mentally where it's like does that motivate you intrinsically like do you need that like extrinsic motivation like right. uh, like outside of yourself or do you have it inside where it's like you know, I want to be the best. I want to like, you know, compete and be on that same level with the best guys. And for everybody, it's different, you know, but like, like you're saying, it's, it's important. You, it needs to be like, like when you wake up, like when I wake up, that's why I'm thinking about like, okay, what's, what are the steps I'm going to take through the rest of the day? Mm -hmm. So that by the time I go to bed, I'm going to feel like, like at least semi-satisfied, right. you know, to like 
or like fully content with like my effort of that day. So, um, you know, there's always a, like, it's like the, the saying of like the, the, what is it like the pain of regret or the, like the small disciplines are sl- like not always, not, not always the most comfortable, mm-hmm. but looking back, that's going to be a harder pill to swallow than the daily pill of discipline, so right. to speak. You know what I mean? Right. So I look at it like that, you know, with the kids that I coach and things like that, I usually just, I, I've always tried my best to lead from the front and show first and then mm-hmm. tell, you know, that's what they teach kids in school. Show, show and tell. Right. You don't tell first and then show it. It's you show and then tell and, and uh, le- leading by example, I think, is, is always going to be, uh, for me, how, how I would, I, you know, look to inspire the next generation. Uh, that's kind of the way I think about your question, too, is, is not just, like, um, the importance of discipline, but also just, like, yeah, I think, too, is I've seen as well as, like, being able to lead from the front in that way people will naturally follow and then those people can end up be- becoming your closest allies to help you get your goals right. to achieve your goals even more you know right. so there's kind of that balance between like being super selfish i think with the goal with, like you know focusing on like especially athletes like, you have to almost only think about yourself but right. there's those periodic moments where it, throughout the day it's like i gotta step out of that and focus on other like helping others too you know so absolutely it's kind of and long-winded way of answering a question but no I, yeah, I, yeah. I get it and if if you don't mind I, I can give you a quick context as to why I even asked that that, that question it's it, because it seems like there are different sorts of there are many success stories I think in sports and here if we speak on on jiu-jitsu there, there are different types of success in jiu-jitsu uh, you know you for some people it's attaining rank you know mm-hmm. m- m- moving rank and you know what that that's an achievement right absolutely and, and for some it, it might be that but also pursuing competition you yeah. know what I'm saying and, and then there's there's others and each one you know m- more power to you right? yeah but each one's its own version of success right absolutely yeah. and it's not to negate one versus the other uh, as a fan of, of, of Con- and I'm just speaking as a fan here, I, I, I say this res- respectfully, uh, I think all of those are valuable to the ecosystem because they all play an important role in, in continuity and bringing up m- m- more people in, into whatever sport it is, if it's for recreational, uh, if it's for you know competition and so on. Yep. But I think the, my, my bias is competition. I think, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that competition uh, is where it's at for any sport. Like, if it's hockey or, or curling as Canadians, yeah. you know, we can say, you know, look, man, we produce tons of, a ton of curlers, a ton of high level hockey players, and it's competition. That's what, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it so, progresses things the quickest, right? Absolutely. And people want to be witness that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, you know, when, when you say, when you, you're giving me a ratio of three years to that six months in terms of pr- progression, yeah. Like, I mean, like, you know, I hate the expressions, there are levels to this, but, but, you know That's what I mean? True, Th- there yeah. clearly are. Yeah, there, there, there is. And I, I'm in a fortunate position to have had the network and the timing, even just like economical timing, things like that. Right. Um, you know, being able to like risk, take big risks. Like sure. I was in a position to take some bigger risks to be able to move with my wife and things like that. So, um, that helps too, you know, like. Uh, but you know, like they say, like luck is when preparation meets opportunity, you know? Right, so right. if you're constantly preparing, boom, the opportunity comes, you're ready. You know what I mean? So I think, I think what you're saying, for, especially too, is, you know, much it, respect it, it, for you, to you for, yeah. for taking that risk, but you know what I'm saying? For, for diving yeah. in there. Cause you could first. fail. I could fail miserably. Not. And even if it's not even a failure, like, oh, I got to move back to Canada. Like, no problem. I love uh, Canada's the best. You know, I, this Dude, is where I've, my home's been. And you know what? You're, you're pursuing. W- yeah. W- w- sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by, by, no problem. By, no, by, yeah. by giving you your, your own answers or whatever. But from the sounds of it, you're pursuing what you love. You yeah. know what I mean? What you've been doing and yep. what you've been applying uh, on, on the mats and off the mats and, and all that. And For I sure. mean, you know, like, not many people, and I'm not just talking about Juju, I'm not about yeah. in life, man. Like, yeah. not many people. Uh, put themselves in those scenarios when you talk about when you talk about risk taking, because it certainly Definitely, is that. Yeah, it's you know? uh, and, and people get comfortable too. You know, sometimes it's like if it's only like kind of hard, but it's not like so hard that you need to like motivate yourself to like do something completely different. People will always 
I think gets stuck in kind of just like what's easy, what's 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 easy and what's common to them, you know. Right. And you know, I don't know if it's a nature nurture thing or good parenting from my parents or mentors, like I said, but there's something that's like that I've been given at least where it's like you gotta you gotta reach out, you gotta reach out, even if people say no. Uh, that's okay, you know, move on to the next thing, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you need to align yourself with somebody that's going to help you get to, you know, help you take those risks as well, because it's hard to take risks on your own, mm-hmm. but there's somebody else who's also has a risk tolerance that you could align with and perhaps, you know, they could be an ally of yours. So that's the way I look at it. And, uh, you know, like coming back to my wife, like she's been a world traveler for her whole life as well. So oh. like it was a pretty easy thing for us to kind of just like game plan as, you know, as any couple does uh, to say, hey, let's try something different. We've been in Canada pretty much our whole adult lives uh, are working rather in Ottawa area specifically. Right. And uh, like we prepared and the opportunity came. Boom. We jumped on it. We're like, let's go to Austin, you know, so. Adventure, yeah. man. It sounds like it, it, it like, is a bit of adventure, and that's kind know? of the fun part too, right? It's like, okay, it's big, like a little bit risky. We're like cutting all our ties, basically business ties, even some family. Sure, you know that was tough too. And uh, but you're in the same time zone, right? Uh, same time Austin. zone. I yeah, mean, it's, exactly. it's only a, what? Less it's only like five, four hour flight. Right. It's not crazy, you know. Right. But and Austin is an. I've never been, but I've heard it's 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 like a very unique city in Texas. It's yeah, got like it's like a, it's like a little startups. bubble. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Like a huge creative community, a lot, lots of startups and so on. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate your time. Two more questions, if yeah. you don't mind. Like, we're, we're here right now, uh, La Cité Collégiale in, in, in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And, and you know, I, I spoke to, to the organizer, G- G- George uh, Brito, and he was saying that... This George is great. Yeah, and he said there's 700 people participating in this Nogi tournament. What they didn't is, expect that. That's they, wild. Did, they did not expect yeah, that. they didn't expect that. What, what are your opinions on that? So as, as a local uh, Ottawa guy who's come up in the scene here, in, in, in the grappling, in the mm-hmm. martial arts scene, combat sports scene, seeing... Uh, this level of involvement for for Nogi, wh- what does it mean for you, and what wh- what does this mean about the Ottawa e- Jiu Jitsu ecosystem? If I can say that, it's incredible. You know, um, it's very special. I think it's really cool to see, especially like you know, being a- being around at least a decade and a half now in the Jiu Jitsu scene, it's just seeing the progression and the involvement, even just social media, like the ADCC brand in and of itself, like speaks volumes, right? So, and the marketing and the level of commitment from the athletes that are, you know, in the U S that are, you know, and the, and the backing that's going into it, it, it's an incredible thing. So the ADCC brand, I think pulls a lot of weight and then plus the push of all the gym owners and all the athletes all over the country, just coming in here, flying in, you know, it's, it's really neat to see the. The, the level of dedication, you know, mm-hmm. the, how much people are investing in themselves, investing in that, like, you know, like, like we were saying earlier, like that progression of competition, that be, like pushing the envelope. Right. Um, I'm sure there's many people that wish they could be here, but couldn't this weekend, you know, it would probably would have been a cr- crazier numbers, maybe even in, in Toronto or, or soon to be Montreal, you know? Right. Um, so it, it, for, it's cool to see, man. It, it's a really special thing and uh, I'm happy to be part of it. And, you know, I look forward to putting on a, on a good show tonight. So, for sure. One last question for you, as as a competitor, what's the best advice you would give to uh, someone who wants to be in your spot in terms of like you know that competition experience and and that pursuit of of podiums and greatness? What what advice would you give them? My best piece of advice would be to build a schedule that aligns as a professional athlete would take part in so like what is your how are you sectioning off your day to day because your days turn into weeks and your weeks turn into months you know so as somebody who wants to get to the highest echelons i think you know should be formulating each day in such a way where they're focusing everything that goes that the output of their body and everything that's being inputted into their body it's outputs and inputs you know so the more volume of healthy foods you're eating, the sleep, the diet, the nutrition, you know, your coaching, h- how often are you reaching out, even doing private lessons, like especially for the, the newer guys, mm. you know, if you're in the blue to purple belt range, you should be like trying to absorb and just like 
be the first guy on the mats and the last guy off. Like, there's no secret, really. It's just, right. it's just the guys that are so consistent, week in, month in, month out, year in, year out, with their schedule, just like you know, fully committing guys that, you know, only train t three times a week or, you know, take weeks off for vacation. It's like, it's harder to, you, they'll be good at, you know, it's great to be a recreational like that's n n no shame for that. Right, but right. guys that want to be on that, like super next level, um, you got to be doing it like every day, like six days a week and then maybe one rest day, if not seven days a week, you know, wow. so. Hey, on the recreational side, in terms of injury prevention, what, because, and I ask this because there seems like there's, it's a tough sport. You know what I mean? Like it's, I know it's There's a lot of imbalances that can happen in the body. Right. From right. training and right. not, like jiu-jitsu is very like contractual. Like everything's like, I mean, you're like contra it, it's safer than some of these other grappling sports. Yeah. Like we're not getting punched in the head, you know what I right. mean? But or even like fucking, pardon my language, but being <laughs> yeah. thrown, you know, 40 Judo, to, to, yeah, you know, like Sambo, that. whatever. Like, I mean, that alone is is brutal if, if it's three times, four times. Yeah. But like what sort of, what precautions do you take in terms of, and I know for you it's different. I'm, yeah. I'm asking specifically for recreationalists. I think what, knowing your limits, like mm. some people, like some people are maybe lean a little bit more like stubborn or, you, you know, perhaps some people don't listen to their body they, you know, they kind of want to keep pushing. Oh, they'll just put it aside. And they have this mentality of like passive recovery. Okay. So they're not really, they're just kind of letting time heal the wound, which is like, I think the opposite. Like you need to be moving it. Like if, for example, you have a bum shoulder or your elbow hurts or et cetera. Right. You know, you want to have, again, building that schedule. Like, okay, certain section of my, my training is going to focus on whether it's 10 minutes or if it's an hour, depending on how much time you have on your hands of just like whether it's massage or if it's like sleep, even just better sleep habits will help you right. recover, you know, things that, um, you know, massage, all the tools that you see out there that are, Physio. Uh, yeah, being resourceful with your tools and then also being resourceful with other professionals that are like, like trained professionals, like physio, physiotherapists, you know, osteo, mm -hmm. osteopaths, like osteopath, um, I've kind of mostly focused on physio and osteo. Those guys are usually the ones that have like cured my body. So wow. Well, and two man, most people you want to spend 150 bucks an hour to go. Most people spend more on their vehicles, to sure. get, you know, to have maintenance than they do their own bodies. Or are you just eating out? Well, well you know, go, go, going yeah. to like a, a restaurant. It's wild, and, right? And, yeah. So like, yeah. if you know that you can recover 50 percent faster by spending a little bit more. more effort and energy and resources you know that's so that's the kind of the the trade-off between like passive recovery versus active like mm -hmm. actually like literally being active about it so that's kind of how i've dealt with injuries so right yeah on. there's many different ways but i i know a couple of them no yeah. i mean it's, yeah. it's it sounds like that's you're reinvesting in in, in your body and, and definitely you know, definitely that, health and nutrition you know those things are all like nothing worse than like overdoing it in training and then waking up and you're, oh man, you're waking up in the morning, things are hurting. Like, mm -hmm. so I think like, fo like studded foam rollers, bro. Honestly, if like one, wow. one uh, tool, studded foam, rollers. studded foam rollers, like the foam they, they, rollers they, they, that kind of have like the, like half golf ball yeah, nubs yeah, yeah. that are like rock. I like that. Right. That gets wow. right in there. So wow. it's kind of like a cheap investment to like a cheaper alternative than, you know, maybe drop in a hundred bucks a week on an osteopath or something. Massage. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to like get in there and that's, that's really helped me. Those, those study foam rollers. So wow. keeps me going, you know? Well, you should start your own brand of, of I, yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. There's good ones out there, you, you know? know, and, and, and do some uh, sponsorship sort of, mm -hmm. you know, like mo monetize idea. that, that sort of, cause yeah, you reach there, out there. Yeah, cause there's an audience for, for, for this. And, and I think one thing I've noticed, uh, sorry, last comment. One thing I noticed with the community is that, a lot of creativity uh, on on the entrepreneurial side. You know what I'm saying? Like they they coming up with, with with new new brands, new products, and and it's I think I think it's good for the ecosystem. I Definitely think bringing others, more brands into the into the mix. Hell sure. yeah! And other sports are, are picking up on yeah. that. Not, you know what I mean? There's always. Uh, definitely a, a mimicking which is just part of how things work. Yeah, right? that's People. definitely something I I should pick up the slack on for sure. Is like reaching out not just to you know gym owners or things like that but also yeah for sure like 
tool, tools of the trade, so to speak. Yeah, you know? man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's some people are, are are doing that, but it's it's one of those things where, especially if you're a competitor type, and you, and you tie that in, and definitely, then, it's a good know, idea, man. I yeah. I like yeah. that. Idea for sure. <laughs> right on, right on. Cool, well, man. Well, thank you very much for for chatting, and uh, all the best. My with pleasure. The, with this your was great. Thanks for tonight. the interview, man. Definitely yeah. take care.